Hey everybody, this next project I'm going to do, I'm kind of in a catch-22, it's summertime here, and it is hot, hot, hot. And the catch-22 I'm in, my solar's working great, it's summertime and i got plenty of sun. Catch-22, it's hot, and I want to get this AC going. I could just run the generators and run my old uh, cabin system off the generators, but I'm a little bit cheap, and uh, be honest, look right here. That double flash means my battery bank's full. It just seems like a shame to not use the solar. And uh, I've got suitcase generators that I got from Harbor Freight. They're made by Yamaha and they're very convenient if you just pick one up and use it. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna get a bell box and mount it right here with a receptacle, drill through the wall. Let's go outside. Make sure I don't fall. Ha ha. Go down the steps and try to use camera. So, right here, I'll come out with a piece of conduit and come down. And out of that conduit, there'll be an extension cord that's long enough I can put a generator even over the shop as long as I want, get it out of the rain. I've got a generator shed right here, though. And it opens up, and I can run the generators there. What that conduit will look like, this is what I've done for the washing machine. There's conduit, it's going through the wall, hitting the receptacle, comes down, and I got an extension cord. This is SOW cord. Um, it's near the end of the month. I get paid once a month, so I went a little bit cheaper. I bought 14 AWG ext extension cords that are rated for outside and UV rated. This part of the cabin doesn't get that much sun, so I'll just go ahead and use those. I'll cut the end off and wire it up to the receptacle. So uh, the next step, I'm going to drill a hole in the, in the cabin, which I'll be honest, I'm a little mad at myself. I wish I'd have roughed the cabin in and had this done, but it just wasn't in my head when I had everything wiring it, wiring it up. And then later I was like, you know, it seems a shame to run the whole cabin on, a gener on generators using all that gas when I've got solar. And I've got two six pack uh, generators. So instead of using two at once and parallel on them, I'm just going to go one single one. They'll cool the cabin. If not, this window unit will run on a generator, and that window unit will run on a generator. And uh, they're inverter type generators too. They sip gasoline, so I'm hoping between the two that'll help save some fuel too. So next step, drilling hose. So here we are at the next step. Got a hose drilled. Show you a little trick in drilling these hose. Get some lights on. One, I've got this stuck out the wall. That way I can find it on the other side. And another trick I do is I never run wire near these receptacles except on the stud. So I'm not hitting a stud, so I should not be hitting a wire. Another thing I'll do, I'll stick that screwdriver when I first drill this side of the hoe and I'll ream out the wall. I went with insulation that's plastic lined for a vapor barrier and it wraps up around the drill bit and it just gets to be a god awful mess. So let's go outside and I'll show you something else going on. A little trick if you don't have a lot of tools. Try to go down the steps again, not fall down. Sorry about the shaky camera. So here's the one, I got a conduit and I'll stick a fish tape through here and then I pull the wire and then the extension cord will come down here. See the drill bit right here? So, my lean-to here for my propane is in the way. I could be lazy and just drill a hole through that tin and go through there. I just don't want to fight it. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the LB horizontally, come here, bend it, and come down. Okay, so how do you bend this kind of pipe? Hmm. Well, it's easy. You need one of these. You need one of those. You just heat it up and bend it. So, okay, now for craftsmanship. If I scorch this by getting the flame a little too close and you get in a hurry, you'll do that. Gray primer covers it up. Just hit it with some sandpaper, spray it, even the electrical inspector, he'll, he'll buy it off. So the conduit's gonna go right through here, up and over. So that'll be the next step. 
So I want to show you a trick I do. You know, you, one man gang, you got to learn how to do stuff by yourself. So what I'll do is I'll drill the back of this LB out and put two screws. Now I don't need three hands. I can get a measurement right here because the conduit comes to right here. Come over here, get my 90 and come down. I don't need three hands. And this cuts out having an apprentice if you're an electrician working for a, uh, a shop. So it's one of the things. I was worked a lot of solo jobs to save the contractor's money. So this is just one of the things I, I picked up. And what I'll do too is I'll caulk all around that. I don't let any water be a problem. And I wanna show you one other thing. So I went with an LB here. Here, this is called a FS box. And the reason I didn't go with an LB is because our local hardware store is getting hammered due to COVID. They can't keep enough stuff. So what I did, I went with an FS box and I just drilled the back of it. Is that code? Probably not, but you do what you can, man. Uh, if they don't have it and you got to keep working, figure another way out. So that's exactly what I've done here. That'll get a cover on it and then we'll move on just running the wire in it. So I'm going to start bending some conduit. So we're at the next step. So you can see the conduit's bent and I use the torch. And what I do, and I just didn't set a tripod up. I could have showed y'all more. What I'll do is I'll lay that conduit on that second rung and gravity, when I start heating that pipe up, will bring it down and help me start my bend. You don't have to have three hands. So what I did there, I just bent it. I'm showing you this paint. It's an exact match for the color. I scored it in two places. I just wasn't moving fast enough. It's real easy to bend this conduit on a summer day. And on the win in the winter, it's a little tough and there's a trick you can do. Get some newspaper or a rag and stuff both ends of the conduit. It'll trap the heat and then you can start warming it up again. So we got the LB mounted and now I'm gonna show you another trick. There's the extension cord. You can see where I cut the end off. I'm gonna use that for a rainy day one day. So I've stuffed the wire up in here and here's one of the tricks. See that fish tape? I've got it open here. That helps it pull. This flag on here will help me get that tape off where I can just pull the wire off and I'll leave this exposed also so I can just cut it and I'm done. You'll see a lot of guys just wrap the crap out of it and then they're get, doing the Easter egg hunt and a pocket knife and wasting a lot of time. Another trick, I've only got one wire here. There's three, the ground, the neutral, and the hot. The black's hot, the white's neutral, the green's ground. I've taped that up so it'll go through the wall easier. So here's how it looks in here. I want to show you another thing you can do. Uh, another reason I like using these bell boxes, and I'll show you what a bell box is. I like the look of them. Also, I like the contrast. I'll have a label that says house power here, and then I'll have a label that says gin power here. That's a good visual to know which one's which. Yeah, you're wiring it, but probably the person using it's not gonna be you. It's probably gonna be your significant other or family member, and you don't wanna confuse them up. So here's the fish tape. All I gotta do is pull it and the wire will come through. Here's another thing I do. These come with tabs that you can stick here and then mount the screw externally. I think they look like crap. So what I do is I drill it and I put two drywall screws here and it's more secure now. You can. It ain't going nowhere. So when somebody plugs this in and abuses it, the box ain't gonna fall off. So uh, here we go, let's just pull it. Of course, it's gonna hang up a little bit. I'm trying to film and hand pull. And there it is. Man, don't they, hey, that's magic. So the next thing, I'm gonna mount that conduit on the outside. So appreciate you watching, appreciate you hanging out. I wish I set a tripod up so you could just see a guy work, and I think that's what people like seeing. Uh, leave me a comment if that's the kind of videos you like, and I'll start taking more time. But I uh, appreciate you watching, and uh, this video just show you another trick so you can help cool your off-grid cabin. So I appreciate you watching. I'm going to go put some conduit up. So we're at the next step. All i got to do is put some caulk on it. Conduit's going down. I got the wire coiled up, ready to go. Here's the FS box, wire coiled up, ready to go. Now let's go inside and you're like, okay, so what's the next step? 
Well, you need a receptacle, don't you? Got to plug that AC into something, and you're like, well, I don't know how to wire a receptacle up. Well, we're going to have a little class here and some tricks. So this is the ground wire, and it goes to the receptacle. Here's a ground wire. Well, that ground wire from here to here, that's called bonding. And the reason for that, we got a metal box. You want that grounded. You don't want the yoke, that's the yoke, being your ground and your bond. You want a wire. Think about it. So, okay, I still don't know how to wire a receptacle up. Well, let's do it. So there's the white wire. There's the black wire. There's the green wire. All right, black goes to the brass. Let me get the camera reset. Goes to the brass. The white goes to the silver. Well, they look a look a little bit close to you. Oh, crap, now what do I do? See the skinny one on the right on this camera and the left one over here? Well, that's the white. That's the neutral. That skinny one, that's the hot. If you ever took a journeyman's test, that's one of the first questions they ask you. Which one's the hot? And they only show you the picture. That's the hot. That's the ground. And that's the neutral. One other thing, man, just don't go and shove that in there. Show some pride. Put some electrical tape and wrap around this receptacle and then put it in there. Also, dress it up if you're using Romex or cord. Put some tape on that and show some pride on that too. So the next step, I'm just going to keep wiring the receptacle in. And we got two of them to do. Appreciate you hanging out with me. And this is how you do it. Well, here we are. I got the power going. I don't want to show you how it turned out. You can see what it says, gin power, house power. And you can probably hear in the background the generator running. I still got all the windows open. And you can't feel it, but it feels good. And I'm gonna show you a trick. If you got a window unit you haven't run in about a year and you're freaking out that it's not cooling good, you're like, my God, it's out of Freon. Or as we now call it, refrigerant. I'm gonna show you a trick. You need a glass of water. And no, you're not thirsty. It is. So what you do, you can see water is already dripping out of it. That's what's happening. It's removing moisture in the air. Sometimes these things need a jump start. So you get the glass and you just put it right up and hit it. And that'll get the evaporator coil working. This unit over here is really bad about trying to trouble or get going. And I think it may be because it's a heat pump and also because I don't use it, but maybe one month out of the year. So the glass of water, that's the trick, man. So you can see there's the conduit. Core going over here. I got a trip hazard right now, but uh, I'm just too lazy to put it under the gin shed right now. I'm tired. It's been a long day. Here's the generator. There it is. Okay, here's something you can really mess yourself up on though. See that cord? If you go buy those cheap extension cords that are 16 AWG, you might as well get some lighter fluid and whatever you're trying to use, go ahead and burn it because it's gonna burn up. That's a number 12. All my cords are number 12 and number 10s. I will not scrimp on it. Don't scrimp. That's where you can burn your stuff up. So there we go. I'm off grid and I've got AC. I hate to be using a generator, but uh, hey, I'm in the south and I can't take the heat like I used to. I got hurt on a job one time and got overheated. So once you that happens to you, you just can't do it anymore. So uh, that wraps this video up and I uh, appreciate you watching. And uh, hopefully this gives you an idea how you can do some things that you're off grid cabin or just if you want to be more self-reliant the power goes off at your house and the power company's not going to come out and i'll say this too i went down to katrina and helped those people and it was mind-blowing how many people were unprepared everybody's been they are we are and we are we're dependent on the, the systems that we have now well, that's great when it works might as well cost me a couple bucks to do this if i don't ever use it again so what so anyway, I appreciate you watching and please subscribe and leave me a comment on what you think could have been improved here. Take care and uh, God bless. Hey, I want to do just a quick follow up before I start editing the video. So there's the, the window unit. 
this, these things run all, constantly all the time. Um, I can't say they got a great thermostat. And to me, that's just eating power when you don't need it to eat power. So I've been experimenting with these Johnson Control thermostats. They're very easy to wire up. You can see they're an inline wire up. The thermostat is line voltage. You just plug it in and plug in the window unit. These are made for refrigerators. You can hear it's not running right now. This is like just like having a thermostat for a central heat and air unit. So you can see I've got it set on 75. The unit's not running. Now let's go see what one looks like not on a thermostat. This thing constantly runs all the time. So I plan on putting a thermostat on it too, just like you saw. They're made by Johnson Control. Another reason I like them, I'm running these off the generator. So running these off the generator, that's less load put on that generator, which means less gas. So it's just another way to be efficient. These work really good. And uh, I've used these on also on refrigerators that uh, start icing up. You think, well, they're getting low on Freon. Probably not. Thermostat's bad on it. If you really want to get anal with a refrigerator, these are a lot more accurate. That's what's in uh, the refrigerator setting. Use these on a refrigerator. Just have this at the door. They work great. I also use this on a deep freezer that when I harvest the deer, I'll use this and I'll turn that deep freeze into a refrigerator. I'll put a fan in it and then I've got a way to age the meat. So it's a good way to uh, stretch your dollars out. And deep freezes make great refrigerators, especially in an off-grid situation. So if you want to really get an efficient refrigerator, use one of these on a deep freezer. So anyway, that wraps it up. Everything's working great. You can hang meat in the cabin. I love it. So, appreciate you watching. Take care. and God bless. Appreciate you watching.